Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to all of the newest subscribers. I appreciate you, I'm glad you are here and I pray that Ruach Naim blesses you, undergirds you with strength and courage to remain and to continue to believe the Lord our God. He is worthy to be praised. Please stay with me. This word is pretty weighty in a good way. Uh, some things that God has been revealing to me uh, for the last four days, especially. I've been shut in. Today I did get out and go work out. Um, but due to some things that happened last week, I was really shut down and in the house. And I always know that that's God slowing me down. And oh man, oh man, has he continued to reveal uh, things that I questioned, I wondered uh, some of the words he had given me. So stay with me. Um, take every word, a prophetic word, rhema word, back to the Lord. I'm really believing that there are many of, of you that will come across this video that it will meet right where you are. So let me pray. Father, I thank you. I praise you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory. We praise your name. You are worthy, God. We seek your face and not just your hand, Lord. We want to see your glory demonstrated in the earth. We're praying, Lord, for revival, for lost things found, for revitalization, for refreshment to our land, Father the land out there and the land in here and all of those that are connected to us, Lord. Please, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to word my mouth. I completely decrease, Lord, that I may share this the way you want me to share it. So I get out of the way and Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just allow, even as I try to stick to the notes I have, that you're free to flow and that this will really resonate with those that whom this word is for right now, Lord. We're in different seasons, but please, um, I'm asking you that it would meet them in their here and now, that they would hear the Holy Spirit through my voice coming right into their heart, Lord, to let them know you're with them and that they will finish well if they don't quit. I pray this, Lord, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. May everyone, Lord, under the sound of my voice, be visited by you in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm not sure what I'm going to title this, but I wrote two different things down. God plans to use you greatly, and he does or the weight of your call is gloriously heavy because it is for whom this word is for. And I'm going to just stick with me and you'll understand it. So I had delivered a word a while back uh, called Stop Covering Yourselves. It was based on a vision uh, at scene of the number 2225. And I was standing, I saw it on an awning like a building and an awning. So I won't go into it. It's a, a whole nother word. But I want to share with you that today the Lord just brought that number to me, but in a different way. Instead of the Greek, uh, the Strong's Concordance, which he originally had me look it up in, and I delivered that particular word, he gave me Genesis 22, 2 through 5. And I want to read it for you. And it says, um, 2 through 5. I'll start at 1. Genesis 22, 1 through 5. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Moses rose early in the morning, 
saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood from the burnt offering for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young son, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come back again to you. I literally just said the other night uh, in prayer, but I was on my bed and I had my body I mean, I'm laying in the bed, but I was face down and I had my arms sprawled out and the image I I felt as, as I was crying out to the Lord about some uh, heart-wrenching situations in my life that are connected to family. I thought and said, I just feel like I'm being sacrificed. And when I saw this, that's the image I had, right? And so I'm, I'm going to pause by saying this to you. Right now, we are in the, many are in the thick of it. You're in the fire. But I want to remind you that God promises you will not be burned. The testing is necessary for the call on your life. A lot of times we don't know what we can do. We always think we can do it all, right? Until we're tested and then God uses that to prune, but to, to burn off things, to show us um, yes, he's equipped us, but that there are things that have to be burned off. The, the laying on the altar is a sacrifice. It's a dying to yourself. And so I want to encourage you to think it not strange. Uh, something else that I talked to my brother, shout out to him if he's watching, um, that I said, I literally felt like I was touching the door of the breakthrough because so many things right now, is upside down. It looks the exact opposite of what all of my journalings are. I got two, two or three journals. Write, uh, the writings, the rhema words, the dreams, the scriptures. Um, that's the most important, the scriptures themselves. But many most of the time the Lord has given me, I'm going to say all the time that I deliver here, scriptures tied to what he showed me uh, as to what he meant. Um, and then he will, it's like an onion. He might peel back another layer, which is what I'm doing with you now with this 225. But I'm going to just shift gears just a little to keep going. All of these things were coming back to me as I have been shut in, as I said. And I was sharing this with uh, my brother at one time and um, my mom, too, about some situations. And these are heart-wrenching things in my life, things that are really important to me. And they don't, they aren't things, they're people. And the Lord brought back this word from November 18th, 2021 at 2 p.m. He says, Kettle Shane, don't I release them? Now I have I put question marks when I wrote that and read it, but just yesterday. It kept coming to me, and I, don't I release them? What does that mean? And then he led me to look up release. I love words. And sometimes they give another layer if you, you could know what the word means, but to look at synonyms, God will highlight other things. Release, to set free, to let go, to liberate, to free, to redeem, to rescue, to announce, to make known, to make public, and why am I saying this? God is saying he, at the set time, he is releasing, he is announcing, he is uh, liberating his holy ones, his kettle sheen that the world may see. And this is kind of that Isaiah 60 uh, and one through three, arise, shine for your light has come. It's talking to the sons and daughters of God to arise. 2, 2 p.m. is when I saw it, and I thought two, and that's the, the in Hebrew, 
the Hebrew alphabet, it's bet, meaning a door. And I talk a lot about these doors, that God's opening that way, that door, uh, for us to be, he's making known, he's going to make public. Stay with me, because here's the next thing. October 21st, 2021, at 3 a.m., the Lord placed this in my spirit, God's signet ring. And he led me to, and I got my notes here, I'm trying to, in my journal, so that I can actually show you and tell you when he said um, signet ring. Now, a signet ring, for those that don't know, I don't think we use them much anymore, but it is, when he gave me that word, this is what he has spoken to my spirit. Let me go to October 21st, 2021. He gave me the words Zerubbabel and then Haggai 2.23. And I have learned that when God gives me what I call an address, I usually go back, I'll read what he gave me, but then I'll go back and kind of read the whole uh, chapter. So Haggai... 223. Let me see. I think I pulled it up so that I would for for my own ease in giving um this word. Let me see. Haggai. Haggai 223. On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shiltel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you declares the Lord of hosts. A person with the king's signet ring has the right, the authority to do work on the king's behalf. It's as 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 if the king himself was there. So keep in mind what I'm saying to you, you holy ones, the ones that God has called. He's using you as his very own signature, if you will, to do his business. A lot of what we're waiting for, these promises, they are about something way bigger than us. Of course, they will bring us a level of ease that we're able, a lot of us are in need of the provision, the financial provision, and the wherewithal to do what God's called us to do. We know that it won't be just for us, but God will bless us with it. You know, one of the, the words he had given me was, don't apologize for the blessing when it overtakes you or feel guilty for the favor on your life. That is a rhema word that he gave me some years back. Another further proof that you are called for such a time as this for, to do kingdom work in God's kingdom is Genesis 47 and 12. And the Lord gave me that uh, that scripture. I just, in the, let me see where it is. On October 21st, 2022 at 1035 p.m. The Holy Spirit dropped this in my spirit. Genesis 47 and 12. This is what it says. Then Joseph provided his father his brothers, and all his father's house with bread, according to the number of their families. Then I wrote, I read the entire chapter. I got to verse 6, and I went back to read 47, and it speaks of Goshen. And God has con had continued to speak Goshen to me in 2020. Specifically, December 28th is when I started, really pinned it, but he had continued to speak of Goshen. And... Um, that is a place of elaborate provision. If you read the story of Goshen, in, um, it, actually in that chapter, it is the best of the land. Um, earlier in the, in the uh, book of Exodus, uh, was, it refers to Goshen as having light when the rest of the land was in darkness for three days. So I think that is so beautiful. Uh, moving on, stay with me, you guys. In, on May 15, 2021, I saw the words approved by God, uh, further highlighting that your, his stamp of approval making you his signet ring. It, it means he's watched you. He's watching you. He is testing you. 
and you're finding yourself in his sight uh, faithful. You're finding yourself to be um, trustworthy because many times for Joseph to have been able to do that, to care for his family, to give, he was their answer. Yes, even after they threw him in the under the bus, you know, in the pit, sold him, lied to the father, told him he was dead. And he went through a lot. And so for those, some of you, you have gone through much, much, much. And I'm not talking about things you did um, because of sin in your life, things I've done because of sin. I'm talking about things that was a direct attack of the enemy to kill your dream, not just your dream. It's the dream God gave you. And Joseph, we know, maybe, you know, I've heard different interpretations of, you know, he shouldn't have been telling the dream. Sometimes you're just excited. I know I get excited when I see things are, and, and we have to be careful um, for a couple reasons, because, you know, we can dream, but we also want to make sure it's God's. And then God gives us wisdom on how much to share. And for us talkers, we talk and it can get you in trouble too. Um, or have you uh, have people notice you because you're talking and it can bring the wrong attention your way. So any anyway, he stayed the course. And then God, after he showed me approved by God, I got up to pray and he had given me Habakkuk 2 and 3. And I talk about this in one of my sabbatical um, videos because God used that that day to um, encourage me to dream, to write it down. He's I kept saying, I'm, I'm sick. I want you to write it down, Chantel. I know you're reading it, but I want you to write down what you see, what you want for your life. And that started my journey that I'm on now. Um, and it, and I want to highlight in that God says it will be fulfilled. It will surely come. So there is a time in which it has to come. Uh, if God said it, it's going to happen. And so here's another reminder. May 7th, 2022, 3.14 a.m. The Lord simply wrote, uh, gave my heart gatekeepers. And I've been sitting with that just to understand more what gatekeepers do and who they are. But basically, they're people who protect the temple or whatever their assignment is. They're watchmen. Um, I like to think of it like, and it's for a good reason. Like they're people of integrity. They're going to do right. Um, Micah 6, 8 comes to mind. You know, they're going to do justly, rule well, and, and operate in the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. I want someone to know that God does see you in your hard places. And I think many times God is smiling at us while we're crying out, <laughs> while we are feeling like failures because we don't see just yet what he said or we don't see the full um, manifestation of it yet. It can be a very weighty weight, right? You can start to question yourself, hath God said? And... Um, I believe he just wants me to remind you that he sees you. You are, have proven to be a humble person, a person of, of honor. And God promises those kinds of people will find favor with him and man. Even though we don't seek man's approval, you know, you don't want to not have their approval, but it's not like you're craving or ap have an appetite for their approval. You want God's approval. And I believe this is just God's sweet way of saying to you, I see you. And that he smiles. And just, it's interesting because he recently, when I spoke gatekeepers, he gave me right after that Zephaniah 3 and 15. And wouldn't you know it, I just released the video. <laughs> Again, I operate in the prophetic. I know I do. Um, even when I'm unsure, God keeps showing me like, you just did this. I, it came in my spirit. It was Zephaniah 3 and 17, which came to my heart the other day. But he had given me three Zephaniah 3 and 15. And let's see if I if I pulled that one up. Uh, I don't know. You can read it, though. Y'all can read. <laughs> Y'all can read it. And then I want to um, just share this, too, as I'm sharing this. 
Why am I sharing it? Because this is, again, it, it's not for everybody. Um, some of you may just be considering your journey for with the Lord, right? May just be kind of starting to, okay, Lord. But some of you have really been on this journey for years and decades. And you are starting to wane. And, and it happens. Back, I have so many videos. I look back. I said, oh, my gosh, I tell you, you believe it or don't you? Because I feel like I was, I'm always, I don't want to say whining, but I believe in being tr transparent about what I'm feeling. I'm trying to be careful about it, too, um, how much to share, what to share. But it is a real struggle. And I want those of you that may not necessarily have a platform like this to know just because people are showing up, they be, they show up out of obedience to God. They're, they believe God despite their feelings, despite what they're going through. And they are going through some warfare because do you not think the enemy is just rolling out the red carpet because you decide you want to go with God? No. And if you fighting things that in your ancestry, in your bloodline that people did not, or they they covenanted it so with with the demonic then you don't think you have to fight those things fight through that and that brings me right to this next vision in a vision on on january 4 2023 i saw myself walking up some stairs and it looked like um i'm gonna say the white house but it wasn't the white house but it was um white and pillars these big pillars and i was walking up the stairs and i saw 611 at the time, I saw 611. I thought, I wrote Ephesians 611. We'll talk about putting on the whole armor of God. And just on uh, yesterday, the Holy Spirit brought to me Isaiah 61 and 1. And I'm going to tell you why that really blew my socks off in a minute. It says... The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Now, why did this, before this happened, I had literally, literally, hold on, I got to answer this. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, Yeah, I had to answer that. That was kind of one of those things I was telling you about, but... Continue to pray for me. Continue to pray for um, just all the things for each other, okay? I'm looking for God to do miracles. I'm looking for God to restore. Um, getting back to, I think, where I left off with the vision of me walking up these stairs. And the Lord had originally given me Ephesians 6, 11, And then he gave me um, Isaiah 61 and 1. And alongside that, I had been thinking on the repair of the breach. On my community post some days ago, I spoke about and connected a video in which I did broken in his hands and uh, where he was talking about beautiful scars and how the, just reminding me that um, Jesus is the repair of the breach. He is the original repair of the breach, but his children, his kettle sheen, his holy ones are have that same mandate on their lives, on our lives, to bring refreshment to people, to bring healing to those. Now, you, we don't heal. Jesus heals, but we bring, um, we declare the word. Um, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. Why? Because the Lord has anointed us to do what? To bring the good news. The good news is the gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. We do that with our kindness, with our uh, helping people in need in different ways, right? And um, years ago, I, I volunteered at a place and the Lord really reminded me of that, at a homeless shelter called the Repairs of the Breach. And it was such a, there's a whole beautiful story even with that and what happened in my personal life alongside me volunteering there. But I learned so much and met some amazing, amazing people. Um, but it was called the Repair of the Breach. And so anyway, um, the reason that really stuck out as I was walking up those stairs in the vision was right before that. And I want to get, um, I don't even need to look because I know what it is. Right before that vision, 
In another vision, same night, I believe, I saw a text from my ex-husband and it said, it was in the dream or vision, or in the dream, it was a text. I looked at my phone and it said, come and save me. And I put question marks behind it um, without going into his personal story and my personal story. Um, he is, at this point to my knowledge, um, really, I would say he is captive to the devil. Um, some choices that were made and I have continued to pray for um, his release. Um, and one word God, I just saw before I came on camera uh, earlier is we're out of my mouth one night some years ago. I said his name and I said he's in the belly of the whale. It was just, again, that's how the Holy Spirit speaks. So, um, but when I saw the text come and save me, I put all these question marks because I'm like, nobody can save another person. I didn't get it. But when the Lord just yesterday revealed Isaiah 61 and 1, and the scripture I just read, it just speaks of um, the year of the Lord's favor. And it's talking about what I'm talking to you about, that your call is gloriously weighty. You have had to endure much because of the call on your life. And it's nothing that you can just jump out there and do. So even though God uses um, new Christians, he uses um, all of us in our different respects, right? There is something to having had matured. Um, and we're constantly maturing, don't get me wrong, but there's something to, um, and I'm not talking about age because immediately you think, oh, if I'm this age, there's still a lot of 60, 70 year old babies in the Lord if you haven't spent time with the Lord. So this is not about that, but it's about maturing, okay? And so there is something to be said about someone that has weathered storms and that takes some time. Um, and so I want to say to you whom this applies to be encouraged, to know that your call is great. It goes far beyond you. It goes far beyond even your family, your friends. God is calling many people, I believe, to some high places as he is leveling the ground. Um, and he told me that in 2020, leveling. I couldn't, and he's given me a scripture. I won't go into all of that now, but God has, there's been a mantle changes in the spirit already, and there'll be many people walking into what you were born for, um, what you were called to, and it will bless you. God will always, though, uh, just know that even with that call, that blessing, there's a price that had to be paid for you to get there. And only you can fill the shoes, which is why we stay in our lanes. We work our own, um, our own gardens. We tend to our own field because God has placed us in different parts of his body. And he knows what he called you to. But you've got to be pruned. You've got to be refined. You have to be uh, tested and tried in the fire. And God is with you in it. So I hope that you stayed with me long enough to hear this word. I pray that those of you that are seriously seeking God, running after what he has, what he has called you to do, and that your full desire is to please him because you are walking in all that he called you to be to the best of your ability, knowing that the Holy Spirit of God is the one that will help you, assist you, equip you for the call. I want to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus that your faint, your fear does not faint, that you get to the end of that journey. And the end isn't the end because it's just you go to from one uh, level of glory to another with the Lord until he calls you home, until you're done with your assignment. So I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you take this word seriously. I pray that you take it, that it was straight from the mouth of God to bless you. God's desire is to bless you, not to harm you. Remember that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Your call. 
the weight of your call is gloriously heavy. Walk in it.